so this is part two. We want to move into uh, the next section of this expanded layout. So we've placed our copy, we've placed some photos, and we've showed how to uh, set your subheads and copy the style of whatever you put on a font. You can copy it over in like what we did here with our uh, with our subheads and obviously we're going to need some fine-tuning but what we what I want to move to now is I want to talk about um, when we're placing these photos arranging them and getting the text to flow around them so the first thing I want to do is just in general I'm going to set I'm going to click on all of these photos and I'm going to set a text wrap, just a basic text wrap on them so that the text will flow off of and out from underneath the photos. So we get a better idea of where we're at and the length of the article. Now, <clears throat> when you're doing this, you're going to have on the assignment you have eight photos so here I'm just using I think four additional photos so um, I'm not gonna completely go through it I'm just showing you examples of how to get that work done so remember when you click on you put or you put the text wrap on the object that you want to have the text flow around so you don't put the text wrap on the text block you put the text wrap on what you want the text to flow around. So I click on the photo and then I'm going to come right up here to this area. And this shows this is my text wrap area. No text wrap. Text wrap around the box, around the edge, which we'll talk about later. And then jump object where it totally jumps in. You can also come up to window and come down to text wrap and pull up your text wrap window and then I park mine over here kind of in the parking lot of all my information palettes. Here's where we can really tweak and change up uh, what we want to do. So right now um, this, this box has an even text wrap that goes all the way around and it treats all four sides the same. What I can do is I can come over here and I can change this individually and when I do that if you'll notice this is my text raw text wrap area and as I change it it gets smaller right or I can expand it out and that shows you where your text strap boundary is so you can do each side individually so like I can do this left side and kick it out Right? Or what we can do is this little link in the middle right here, this little um, chain link. If you click on that, and then it links everything together, and then all four change together. So no matter what I do to any one of these, it's going to change all of them equally. So it kind of globally works on that image. So that's pushing my copy, as you can see, all the way around. And now, because I have the chain link linked, as I adjust it in, smaller, they all get smaller all the way around it. Okay? A good rule of thumb is you want to have enough space between the picture and your line equal to your gutters that you have. Okay? That's a good rule of thumb is to have them equal to your gutter spacing so about like that okay so this picture I had up here in this corner now I have a text wrap here and here and as you can see it's keeping it pretty much the same as the gutter don't really need a text wrap up top here but that's okay this picture I'm probably gonna bleed off just stylistically whoops let me back up I like to bleed photos so I, in InDesign when you want to scale a photo you click on 
the corner that you're going to move and you hold down the command key and when you hold the command key that is telling the computer that you want to adjust both I'm sorry when you hold down the command key you have to hold it down first so I select the picture hold the command key first then I click on this corner and I'm telling it hey I want to adjust the frame and the photo together so as I adjust it both the frame and the picture enlarge now remember if we want to constrain it so we don't squish our photos we hold down the shift key and the shift key constrains it so that it grows proportionally so I'm going to bleed this off of my page and I'm going to take it all the way up to my bleed mark that I've set for myself all right so I got that there once we've adjusted our flow again we can see this probably don't need that much image probably don't need that much image so I can crop this in a little bit and get kind of a better picture of my pizza and to be honest with you this pizza I think this would be a great shape to do a text wrap around around the shape of the pizza now I could take this into Photoshop and I could build a clipping path around the pizza. That's the cleanest way to do it. Make a selection around the pizza, make it a path, make it a clipping path, and then bring it in and we'd have a nice clean path with no background. And that really is the best way to do it. But right now I'm just going to kind of do a down and dirty quick way to do it. Okay? I'm going to show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on my pizza. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to just going to bring it out here. I'm going to slide the pizza out here, out of the way of the copy. Now I'm going to get my pen tool. And with my pen tool, I'm going to draw a box. Not a box. I'm going to draw a shape around this pizza. Now you'd want to take your time. but I'm just going to kind of go quickly. So again, you'd want to do this in Photoshop to where you have a nice, clean uh, line that goes, a clean clipping path. I turned off my fill so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to kind of quickly and hastily build this kind of chunky clipping path so you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. Go around these bumps. Making these curves. And what's great is, you know, the pen tool is the pen tool. So it works the same in Illustrator as it does in Photoshop. So once you get comfortable with that pen tool, it's going to function the same and you don't have to worry about changes. Okay. So now I'm going to give this point a, uh, so you can see it. There we go. So I've got a really rough path that I made around this. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my pizza. I'm going to cut it, which is Command X. I'm going to select my path that I drew. I'm going to go up to Edit. And I'm going to go to Paste Into, which is an awesome little tool. Okay, So I paste into, and now I pasted my pizza into that shape. So now I can turn off my outline because I don't I don't need an outline. Say none. Lock it down to nothing. There we go. So I have no line. And now what I can do is I can bring this pizza over my layout. I think I think that's pretty good. I think I'm going to expand it. Hold the command, grab the corner, 
and I hold the shift key and I'm going to grow it over just a little like that. Great. So now I've got my pizza on here and I have a text wrap that's going, there's no text wrap on this. So what I need to do is I need to put a text wrap on the block. No, not on the block, around the edge of the pizza, which is this guy right here. You can kind of see it has a circle with that. So that allows the text to flow around, around the image that I made there, right? And this is kind of a no-no. You don't want to have little words up in the corner. So I'm going to expand my text wrap until I kick it all the way off. That's not too bad. I think I'll stop right there. Back one in. All right. And then I can always manually adjust the rest. That looks pretty good right there. So let me stop right there. So we've got photos inserted. We've flowed the text. And now we've talked about some text wrapping. And we're going to continue on and try to finish this up here in our next section.